This is Life FM and this is the time of the week where we talk pop culture and Steve Bell joins us to do that. Hey Steve, how are things with you today? Hello George, quite a bit stiller here in Christchurch. Not so many aftershocks then? No, no, not. it's all settling down I hope. Wow, that's good to hear. Mm. Anyway, well, today. Today, well last week we talked about the, the MTV Video Music Awards, didn't we? With the yeah. whole Lady Gaga thing, so that was an interesting week for pop culture. What, what's caught your attention this week? Well, I toyed with going back there to talk about Lady Gaga's new song, but then I decided maybe we'll wait till it comes out in its entirety right. and we can talk about her being created by God and being perfect as she is. But today, I wanted to look trouble in the eye and then carefully skirt around the edge of it without getting you sanctioned and me banned from uh, joining you. Wow, should I be nervous? No, not at all. We'll be, ca- we'll be cautious, but I want to talk about what I consider one of the funkiest and most infectious songs in the New Zealand charts at present and see if we can figure out why why it is like that and all the while we won't be able to refer to the song in question by its title okay okay this sounds good to me you're all right with that yep good so far so let's set the scene and start alluding to the song that shall not be named back in uh, 05 a song was leaked and picked up by bbc one radio and it went on to become not only the biggest song of 2006, but to break British music chart records for time spent at number one. And then in 2009, the Rolling Stone magazine named it the number one song of the decade. I just knew too much. Mm. Does that make me crazy? remember thinking what an odd choice i don't know what i would have named song of the decade but it wouldn't have been that one wouldn't have been that one did you like it did you think it was catchy yeah i thought it was a good song i wouldn't have gone as far to say as a song of the decade by any stretch though what was song of the decade for george oh goodness <laughs> choose from a million. Oh yeah i, I cannot do one, this on the spot eh? if you like okay what's yours mine um would have been i would have chosen outcasts hey yeah i think a song of the decade really for me, it was kind of ridiculously happy and catchy and danceable. I, I think I can still remember the first time I heard it. I, I just thought that Shake It Like a Polaroid Picture Breakdown was um, was gold. Absolute money song. That song sort of annoyed me. Annoyed you? Yeah, I guess it's just... Uh, maybe I heard it too many times and it just got really burnt, you know, for me. It, it did get ridiculously thrashed. Which is something interesting about Crazy, actually. The record company pulled it from the charts at the end of 2006. People couldn't buy it anymore so that it couldn't get in the charts because they wanted people to remember the song fondly rather wow. than having been thrashed. So there was a period of time there where, in the UK at least, you couldn't buy that song online or in a record shop unless you found a second. That's a weird thing to do. Mm. But it, was, it was still the biggest selling song of the year too. Um, anyway, did you think of one? No. Oh, well, I cannot do this. That's all right. Thank I'll you. think of many when I like when I go home tonight and I'm lying in bed. I'll probably think of a dozen, oh, well, and I have to let you know next time. Yeah, let, let me know next time. But for now, shall we go back to skirting trouble anyway? Yeah, let's do that. Nails Barclay's singer is this um, dude called CeeLo Green, and about a month back, I stumbled upon a new song of his that was, as I said before, just so infectiously catchy. And I, I couldn't help but post it on Facebook. And within the few short weeks since then, the song's made its way onto New Zealand charts. Um, and now the trouble is, I don't think I can ask you to play it here on Life FM. I'm thinking not, because I'm aware of what the title of this one is. So this is where I pass the baton to you, and I let you choose in your wise and measured way to introduce it, and somehow convey the catchiness of it in all its original glory, which the radio version loses by introducing a substitute word. So... I'll let you see if you can work out how to do that. All right. Well, that sounds like a challenge. I'm thinking that we'll have to just play a little clip of the the clean, the radio edit version. But the original title of this track is a swear word starting with the letter F and then U. But this is a little bit of the cleaned up version. Have a listen.
right, so that is CeeLo Green with his new song. Ridiculously catchy, isn't it? But that is the radio edit. It is called Forget You, but the real title of the song, Steve, is not Forget You, is it? No. And I, I, I think it's, it's still catchy, even as Forget You, but in its original instance, it had a slightly different meaning. And when I, when I first posted it on Facebook, one of my friends said this, he said, the biggest question is if this song wasn't about the word, about the F word, would it be anywhere near as popular? And the answer is no, it wouldn't. But my friend's position was that the song was only edgy because of the F word, that its only value was in its edginess. And I don't believe it's because of the shock value of the F word that the song works. So your friend is saying that it's, it's popular because it's got this out there title, because it's edgy in that way. That was his position. I think there are two reasons the song works. Um, and as my friend says, one reason is the juxtaposition of F as such a jarring and raw and emotive word against the silky, smooth, soul sound and cheerful melody. It's a brilliant juxtaposition. But that in itself is a pointer to the bigger reason that it works, which is because everyone feels like this sometimes. Now everyone can dedicate this song to that person who's shafted them, left them for another boyfriend or girlfriend, or invited you to that party and then ostracised you all night and made you feel awkward and outcast, or they've done a bad deal with you, or they've used you to climb the, the corporate ladder at your expense. Now you can dedicate this song to them. But what CeeLo is doing in his song is this. He could spit F you with vehemence like Limp Biscuit or Rage with the, Rage Against the Machine might, and he could be bitter about it and let the bitterness poison him. But instead, he's chosen to sing sort of a cheery, if you, to give voice to the, the depth of his emotions in a meaningful way, to let the other person know how they hurt you, but not to let it eat you up. So I, I, I guess what I'm saying is, in an odd kind of way, this song is about expressing your emotions in a way that frees you to move on in your life without bitterness. Right. So so you were saying that that can be a healthy thing, to, to put it out there, how you're feeling that you might have been hurt by somebody, but you were saying in this song are the kind of messages that he's doing that, but then he's moving on. I, I'm stopping short of saying that this is a helpful song, but the sentiment conveyed could be freeing if you follow follow me there. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't expect Life FM to playlist at any time soon, <laughs> because in our current Christian context, there's no doubt it would be divisive and inflammatory to play it. Yeah, I'm thinking you might be right in that Life FM won't be, <laughs> won't be adding this song to the playlist. But here's what, here's what I'd like to leave you with. I'll see if I can make this work and express myself well enough here. I, I wonder if there will come a time when Christianity and culture will understand each other a little better. And we'll be able to worry a little less about keeping up Christian appearances and instead be able to move straight to the issue. And we won't care that the song has the F word, but understand that the song is talking about a nearly universal adult human experience. And over a a coffee or a cold one with a friend, when we hear this song, we'll be able to discuss CeeLo's catchy new song and unpack our own experiences of bitterness. And perhaps because of it, move on a little into freedom and life as God intended it. All right, so you are saying then that when we hear a song like this, our initial reaction shouldn't be to, to be offended by the swearing in it, but to say, actually, what is the song about? Does this song kind of uh, capture well in a, a human experience that, that we all deal with at different times and think about that as the message of the song rather than saying, I'm not going to listen to this song because of the F word in it. Is that, is that what you're saying, kind of? That's a really nice and succinct summary. The trouble is we are products of our Christian environment and upbringing and and so we have a way to go to to get to being able to do what you just gave voice to. But I I hope that one day I'll get there and that I'll cease to be knee-jerk and be able to engage with culture in a a more helpful manner for people who are seeking God. All right, Steve, well, you've got me thinking (laughs) once again, so thanks for sharing those uh, thoughts with us. We'll catch you next Tuesday. Again, thanks for having me, man. Always good to talk about it.